How's it going, guys? Good back here again with some more. We're all here in MT Arena today. Uh, we're keeping this despite how land heavy it is. Uh, we are playing Gitrog Monster. So this deck has been around for a while, but it got a couple of really good, uh, really good things in the recent sets. Uh, so it got. From MH3, it got um, the Nintuko, the uh, Landfall copy guy. We're not running that one, actually. But it also got the Sylvan Safekeeper, which is nice. Uh, Kami's Gotta Die. That guy is not very cool. Um, it got... Okay, Autumn is fine. Get the rogue monster. We will, uh... Draw our card. Search our library. Put a forest on the field. Um... We also got a couple of things from Bloomboro. Uh, we got a talent, which is nice. Draw our card. I think we're going to go here. My goodness. Uh, we're just going to stay back on defense. Urzai Claw progress can become too much for us to handle, but making attacks not worth it is kind of kind of where we need to be, I think, unfortunately. And I mean, this deck's whole life cycle is very parasitic, like. We need enough lands on the battlefield and in the graveyard to, like, really keep the chain flowing. I think we need our tree folk now. And then we're going to ramp a little bit more. Grab that one. So we can actually put it back in the graveyard to draw another card. Uh -huh. Then we're going to get down this boy. We can start actually dealing damage. Belladros has a long way to go before we start. Uh, before we start getting back up to the life total we need to actually... Uh, actually do the untap again. Uh huh. I'm gonna have to say no to that opponent. GG. <laughs> um, don't know what happened there. Opponent was probably uh. Contingencying their turn around killing, killing Ren before our next turn. I mean, our next turn was going to be insane, so I don't blame our opponent. We could have sacked our 10-10, drawn 10 cards and gained 10 life, and then 
untapped our lands and just continued to uh, keep up the frankly insane amount of pressure. Smeagol is really good. He's another card that I don't play as much of as I should. But it's mainly because he's in two colors, and it's hard to find a a shell that wants him that doesn't have better options, right? Like, you could just play Nazusa, and it wouldn't be as mana intensive, would probably get you more lands on the battlefield in the long run, and wouldn't come with any discernible risk. But... In this deck in particular, I think he shines a little bit brighter because Gitrog is big and scary and probably going to die a lot. Like, that is where he exists in the world. And, uh, any of your instep. So it can't be doing your opponent's turn. But hey, one of the uh, one of the good habits that recording and playing a lot of magic for the channel has uh, has taught me is to double check that I've read the card <laughs> because the number of times I've punted away games on the uh, on the thought that I knew what the card was and so. With an opponent, I will trade this Sylvan Safekeeper for a land. I'll do it. I'm not scared. Yeah, look at me. I got a land. Druid class is very good. We kind of need that. Additional land drops are the easiest way to break the break the conditioning on the Get Rock Monster. You get a uh, some kind of crucible effect that lets you play lands from the graveyard, and then you get a bunch of land drops, and then you just play two lands a turn, basically. The one you have to sacrifice, and then the one you draw. Huh. That changes things. I wanted to kill the arch Archivist. It probably will still do. No, it, no block upon it. You've seen through my clever ruse. Um... Gonna attack like this. What does the one ring say? With greater power, not lesser power. Kinda not great for me. Our opponent, like, if they get to six loyalty, they can ultimate her to bring back a uh a druid. That's not as scary as other options. Uh, the negative two is actually kind of scary. That could be bad. Hmm. Hmm. I might get rocking. Let's see what happens in combat, and then we'll figure out whether or not we're getting Rocky or not. We're trading Danitha for a Smeagol, like fair play. Uh, get Rogging for safety is probably for the best. Not maybe getting down World Shaper be good. Although, if we do get down World Shaper, we do it this way just so that. Just so that combat isn't as uh, scary for us. Like, 
having Smeagol on the battlefield alive is beneficial to us. Uh, if, and only if, we can actually have creatures under our control die during our turn, which means him being the only thing isn't, isn't very valuable. And if he isn't the only thing, Um, uh, what's our plan? I was kind of hoping to set up for a scape shift wheel shape return. That could still be a thing. It could still be a thing. It would give our, our Gitrog monster breathing room when he comes down. And our opponent is quite mana screwed, so. Although they kill us, like. That's gonna be a problem. Hmm. That one, that one, that one, that one. We will get a Dust Bowl, Nykthos, this, this, uh, this. Sacrifice this or one of you one of you going in like this our opponent can jump block but they probably shouldn't okay i mean i i will take a jump block That's such is scary. And that's a lot of ramp. Oh, uh, black, I guess. I mean, the setup was great. How we got there, not entirely sure on, but we basically have enough mana to cast anything in our deck and with one ring we'll have a we set up our one ring turn well enough we'll have the security to uh pursue this uh abundance of mana quite nicely When your ring bearer attacks, draw a card and discard. That's where we're at. So we're going to take a three here, unfortunately. But I think next turn we play Druid class and we rank up our Get Rog monster. Our best draw would be a land, but it's unlikely. Enchanted creatures get plus one, buff one. Or plus two, plus two. Tale for the Ages. That's what set you're from. You're from the Eldraine set. Okay. I saw that symbol the other day in a video, and I was like, I have no clue what set this is from. <laughs> and uh, here, several days later, I uh, finally figured it out. Exactly what I wanted. Decline. We need all of the mana. Not just some of the mana, all of the mana. Skyfisher can go.
So they can double block uh, to prevent all damage. If they block this way, they can't block Spring Bloom Druid because of the one ring. It has a greater power than Spring Bloom Druid, so no block in there. Their opponent actually does have more mana than they uh and they let on. They have five, which is not inconsiderable, but we do have three times as much mana. The thing in our deck is built around mana, so if our deck didn't do that, we would be sad. Would be sad. Oh, they get their land packed. Why not this rail? Oh, you go to hand, that's why. Fair enough. Hmm. What are you doing, opponent? Take the flooring. He's just gonna get jumped by a kit rock monster. All right, this, decline, this, and this. And we will draw a card. Doesn't mean that we have to actually win the game, but we could also just play enough lands to not die to it. Like, as long as we play a land to turn, our one ring is not lethal to us. Do we get rid of the Trampler or the uh, Get Wrong Monster? That is our opponent's difficult position. But I guess I don't have the mana for it right now. They will at some point, though. They will at some point. But we kind of have to kill our opponent before. Before we die. Regrowth, okay. What do I have in here that's actually of value? Oh. Uh, Diefisher, maybe? It has reach. But I could just Binding of the Old Gods. Binding of the Old Gods. And then we try to win with Gorils. Gorils and card draws. We have to deal a little bit of damage to the Archangel, just so that she can't uh, reassemble the team. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 19, 20, 21 mana. If I sacrifice, so we divide that. If we sacrifice 10 lands, uh, we can give our things, our squirrels, plus 10 plus 10 
and with five of them, that's 50 damage. I mean, that could win us the game. That is the theory on how the deck wins the game, by sacrificing lands. Uh, I am down. See if we can make it happen. We could also just die. But I think if we, I think, I think if we actually sacrifice that amount of lands, what'll end up happening is that our opponent has to, has to jump block to avoid dying. Glad the Zephyr Boots do not provide haste, because if they did, I would be sad. And not not on my list of things. To be. My turn opponent. Blackland can go. We'll draw an extra card. We will search for an underground. Gain a life, surveil, burnished heart can go. We will add eight mana. That place a land. That place a land. Yeah, we would have got there. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, remember to leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.